Hi and welcome back. This is Spectre P and we are Spectre AI. What this video is really about is not a single exploit, a single tool, or even a single vulnerability, but a structural failure in how modern environments are monitored and defended. Because most security stacks are still optimized to detect foreign behavior rather than abused normal behavior. And that distinction matters more than almost anything else today. Modern attackers don't need noisy malware, custom binaries, or obvious command and control infrastructure. Instead, they operate entirely inside the statistical envelope of legitimate activity, using the same administrative tools, the same automation frameworks, and the same access pathways your own engineers rely on every day. When detection systems are trained to look for anomalies that violate policy or signatures that match known threats, they systematically miss attacks that are intentionally designed to look compliant, boring, and routine. This creates a dangerous illusion of security, where dashboards stay green while adversaries move laterally, escalate privileges, and prepare impact actions in plain sight. The core argument we'll build in this video is that detection failure isn't accidental. It's a predictable outcome of static thresholds, signature-centric thinking, and models that assume attackers must eventually look evil. In the real world, the most successful breaches happen precisely because nothing ever looks wrong, and by the time defenders realize what happened, the system didn't fail loudly. It failed quietly, exactly as it was designed to. Here, we see the essence of what I call the silent phase of modern cyber operations. Before alarms trigger, before malware is dropped, and long before any signature-based detection fires, attackers are already inside the environment, observing, learning, and blending in. They enumerate users, map permissions, test access boundaries, and quietly probe operational rhythms using legitimate system tools that generate no obvious red flags. Every command looks administrative, every action appears routine, and every log entry resembles normal enterprise behavior. This is not exploitation in the traditional sense, it is environmental assimilation. During this phase, attackers are not trying to break systems, they are trying to understand them deeply enough to move without resistance. Detection fails here because most defenses are optimized for payloads, exploits, and anomalies, not for intent. By the time defenders see something overtly malicious, the attacker has already built a high-confidence internal model of the network. The silent phase is where modern breaches are won or lost, and it is precisely the phase that classical security tooling was never designed to see. This depiction shows the difference between raw activity and meaningful signal, and that distinction is becoming the defining problem in modern security. Environments today generate enormous volumes of telemetry, process launches, authentication events, network connections, configuration changes, but most of it is benign, repetitive, and expected. Living off the land attacks deliberately hide inside that noise by using native tools, normal workflows, and legitimate access paths. So nothing looks obviously malicious in isolation. The challenge, then, is not detecting tools or commands, but recognizing patterns of behavior that don't quite fit the baseline of how the environment normally operates. When you focus only on individual events, everything blends together and defenders drown in alerts. When you focus on relationships, how actions chain together over time, how credentials are reused, how access expands laterally, how persistence quietly forms, you start to separate signal from noise. That's the shift this slide represents, filtering vast amounts of routine activity down to a small number of high-confidence indicators that reflect intent, not just execution. In a quantum era threat model where attackers can move faster, automate more, and exploit uncertainty, the ability to isolate true signal is what determines whether defenders stay ahead or fall permanently behind. What you're looking at here is the core asymmetry that defines modern intrusion. Attackers don't need exotic tools. They need patience, context, and the ability to blend. Every environment already emits signals. 
authentication events, process launches, credential touches, configuration changes, and living off the land activity works by staying just below the level where any one of those signals looks abnormal on its own. Individually, these events appear benign, routine, even expected, but when you aggregate them across time, identity, and execution context, a very different structure emerges. The attacker's advantage comes from exploiting the gap between isolated detection and correlated inference, moving laterally through trusted mechanisms while defenders are still evaluating events in isolation. What matters is not the presence of a single suspicious action, but the sequence, the ordering of access, reuse of credentials, timing of execution, and subtle shifts in behavior that only become meaningful when observed as a whole. This is why signature-based and static threshold defenses consistently fail against these campaigns. They're designed to catch spikes, not trajectories. The real battle is over who can construct a coherent model of intent faster. The adversary, who understands the environment intimately, or the defender, who must infer intent from noisy, incomplete observations. That gap, between raw telemetry and contextual understanding, is where modern breaches live, and it's exactly where traditional security tooling runs out of resolution. What this depiction is showing is the fundamental asymmetry between how modern environments actually operate and how defenders are still trying to reason about them, because in real enterprise systems, nothing happens in isolation. Every action is contextual, chained and temporally linked across identity, processes, infrastructure, and data flows. And living off the land activity exploits that reality by hiding inside perfectly legitimate interactions rather than triggering obvious alerts. On the left side, you can think of the environment as a dense mesh of normal operations. Authentication events, scheduled tasks, management tooling, service-to-service -service communication, all of which generate signals that look benign when viewed individually, but when an attacker begins to abuse them, those same signals start forming subtle correlations that only become visible when observed as a system rather than as discrete logs. As activity propagates laterally, what matters is not a single command or process, but the evolving pattern. Which identities are active outside their historical baseline? Which processes are executing in unusual sequences? And which data paths are being exercised at abnormal times or volumes? This is where static, rule-based detection breaks down, because it assumes fixed thresholds and isolated indicators while real attacks evolve continuously, adapting to the environment as they move. Effective defense, therefore, requires shifting from snapshot-based reasoning to relational reasoning, where confidence is accumulated across many weak signals rather than derived from one strong signature. The core takeaway here is that modern intrusions are not loud events, but slow, shape-shifting trajectories through the environment and only by modeling those trajectories, how actions connect, persist, and compound over time. Can defenders reliably distinguish genuine operational behavior from adversarial intent? What this depiction shows is not a single exploit or a clean attack path, but a system gradually bending under its own legitimate activity, where time, identity, and process execution begin to blur together in ways that defenders rarely model explicitly. Notice how nothing here looks exotic or overtly malicious. The same authentication events, scheduled services, background processes, and network connections that keep an enterprise functioning are the exact mechanisms being reused, replayed, and stretched across time. As attackers move laterally, they don't rush. They allow identity drift to accumulate, credentials to age into trust, and processes to persist long enough that they become indistinguishable from baseline behavior. Temporal spread matters because detection systems are optimized for bursts, not slow continuity, and process chains matter because no single step violates policy on its own. Persistence emerges not from a back door, but from alignment. 
services restarting themselves, tasks inheriting trust, identities being reused just often enough to remain invisible. By the time data movement or operational impact becomes observable, the environment itself has already normalized the attacker's presence. This is why modern breaches survive patching, survive reboots, and survive tooling changes. Not because defenses are weak, but because they are static in a system that is fundamentally dynamic. What you're seeing here is the shape of that dynamic problem, where security failure isn't a moment. It's a trajectory. What you're looking at here is a structural contrast between two fundamentally different ways of reasoning about cyber activity over time. Not just different tools or detection rules, but different mental models. On one side, security systems operate reactively, treating each event as an isolated signal that must cross a predefined threshold before anything meaningful happens, which forces defenders to wait, aggregate, and often miss the early stages of real compromise. On the other side, adaptive reasoning treats the environment as a living system, where weak signals, small deviations, and low-confidence indicators accumulate meaning through context and sequence rather than volume. Instead of asking whether a single action is malicious, the system asks whether the pattern of behavior is drifting away from normal operational baselines even if every individual step appears legitimate. This distinction matters because modern intrusions rarely announce themselves with obvious malware or noisy exploits. They unfold gradually, borrowing trusted tools, identities, and workflows until the breach is already entrenched. By visualizing behavior as connected flows rather than discrete alerts, defenders gain the ability to reason forward instead of reacting late. The key takeaway is that detection isn't failing because we lack data or rules, but because static models cannot keep up with adversaries who adapt continuously. This depiction shows why future-proof security must reason probabilistically, structurally, and temporally, or it will always remain one step behind. What this depiction is showing is the fundamental mismatch between how modern attackers actually operate and how most defensive systems still attempt to detect them. Because living off the land activity does not appear as a single anomalous spike, but as a slow probabilistic drift across time, identity, and process context, where each individual action looks benign in isolation, yet becomes dangerous when viewed as an accumulated sequence, and this is precisely where classical threshold-based detection fails since it treats events independently rather than as a correlated chain, whereas a probabilistic approach treats behavior as a continuously updated belief state that evolves as new evidence arrives, meaning confidence is not triggered by a single event, but by the convergence of multiple weak signals that reinforce one another over time, such as credential reuse patterns, process lineage anomalies, delayed task execution, and lateral movement that respects normal administrative tooling. And once you frame detection this way, the defender's advantage shifts from chasing signatures to modeling likelihood, where the goal is not to prove malicious intent instantly, but to reduce uncertainty faster than the attacker can remain hidden, ultimately collapsing the attacker's safe operating region by making persistence increasingly expensive the longer they stay inside the environment. What we see here is the fundamental difference between static threshold thinking and adaptive probabilistic reasoning in modern intrusion detection. Because traditional security tools rely on fixed cutoffs that assume malicious behavior is loud, abrupt, and easy to distinguish from normal operations. While real-world attackers deliberately operate below those fixed thresholds by spreading activity over time, blending actions into legitimate workflows, and exploiting uncertainty in observational data. In a static model, nothing triggers until a hard line is crossed, which gives attackers a large, safe operating region where credential use, process creation, lateral movement, and persistence mechanisms remain statistically invisible. An adaptive model, by contrast, does not wait for a single event to exceed a predefined limit, 
Instead, it continuously aggregates weak signals, correlates them across time, hosts, and identities, and updates belief as new evidence arrives. This means confidence increases gradually as behaviors accumulate, even when no individual action looks suspicious on its own. The key insight here is that security failures are not caused by missing data, but by misinterpreting uncertainty. Treating low-confidence observations as meaningless rather than as inputs to a growing probabilistic picture. Once you shift from thresholds to inference, attackers lose the ability to hide indefinitely because every action contributes to rising certainty, shrinking their maneuvering space until detection becomes inevitable rather than accidental. What this depiction is showing is the fundamental shift from static, rule-based security logic to probabilistic reasoning over time, where confidence is not triggered by a single event, but emerges from the accumulation of weak, correlated signals. So on the left, we start with the core question defenders actually care about, which is the probability of an attack given observed evidence, not whether any one indicator crosses a hard threshold, and as additional evidence appears, things like suspicious logins, lateral movement patterns, or abnormal privilege usage. The probability is updated continuously using conditional reasoning rather than binary decisions. While on the right, you see what that looks like operationally, where individual events may seem low risk in isolation, but when combined, they rapidly constrain the attacker's operating space, pushing them into a narrower and more detectable zone. And the key insight here is that static cutoffs delay response until it's often too late, whereas probabilistic accumulation accelerates detection precisely because it tolerates uncertainty early and refines confidence as evidence compounds, which is why modern attacks that live quietly inside normal systems are invisible to traditional defenses but become increasingly exposed when viewed through a continuously updated belief model rather than a pass-fail rule set. What this all ultimately shows is that modern attacks don't win by being loud or fast. They win by being patient, incremental, and indistinguishable from normal operations. And living off the land techniques exploit exactly that gap between what looks legitimate and what is actually malicious. Static, rule-based defenses are built to catch spikes, thresholds, and obvious violations, but they struggle when adversaries spread their behavior across time, tools, and identities that already belong in the environment. The real advantage comes from accumulating weak signals, correlating them probabilistically, and letting confidence grow as evidence compounds rather than forcing a binary decision too early. When defenders shift from single event detection to evidence accumulation, Attackers are forced into narrower operating zones, higher risk trade-offs, and ultimately mistakes. The takeaway is not that signatures or thresholds are useless, but that they are incomplete on their own, and without temporal reasoning and probabilistic context, they systematically favor the attacker. In a quantum-era threat model, where uncertainty, scale, and noise dominate, Defense has to move from static certainty to adaptive confidence, because the side that learns faster from weak information is the side that wins. Thank you for watching. If you found this useful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us keep building deep, real-world quantum security content. You can visit specterai.ai to explore over 55 hands-on quantum security labs and learn by doing not just by theory. If you're interested in going deeper, you can also find our books on Amazon. And finally, leave a comment and let us know what you'd like to learn next. We read them all. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.